the chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Midwest <laughs> Regional Conference. <laughs> what? Oh, we're, we're, oh, we're hot. <laughs> Our microphone's on. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. Yay! Hello. We have a full docket of, of guests this week. So I am Nicole Gallucci. I'm Georgia Bracey. And uh, we are your hosts from CosmoQuest. So thank you for joining us this week. Feel free to uh, share the link, uh, share this hangout with people. I know uh, this is this is late for our European friends. Sorry, Guido. <laughs> I think you said it's 1.30 a.m. his time. Um, so still up, aren't you? You're still yeah, up. Come on. <laughs> Yes. Hey, Guido. Uh, and uh, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, everybody. Nancy. Uh, as usual, we will be using the Q&A app to get your questions. So if, wherever you're watching this, if on Google+, YouTube, or anywhere that it's embedded, click on the uh, Q&A app to join the conversation, and we will see your comments and questions there. Uh, and I will try and keep on top of them and keep them coming uh, throughout the show. So anytime mm -hmm. you want to add in a comment or a question, um, just feel free to uh, send it in there and we'll get it on the show. So we have a huge group of awesome people with us today. <laughs> we <laughs> somehow managed this with under 10 connections. Uh, I'm actually quite impressed. Um, so yeah. what we're talking about is the Noyce Scholarship Program through the uh, National Science Foundation. Uh, if you want to learn more about the program in general, it's nsfnoyce, N-O-Y-C-E dot org. Uh, I'll share that link in the show notes and in the comments in a bit. Um, but first, I'd like to hear from each of these lovely people at their lovely institutions. And I, as I mentioned in the pre-show, I'm going to start left to right from how I see it. It's going to be slightly different for you guys. Um, but let's start with uh, Adele and Brian at UT Arlington. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Okay. I'm Adele Quintana, and I am the NSF Noise cohort leader for the University of Texas at Arlington. Uh, we have had the Noise program for about five years here, so we have scholars in a wide range of uh, levels of completion, all the way from juniors to those who are in their third year of teaching. So I am specifically in a position to support those scholars, my experience is mostly K-12 education. So as a cohort leader, I do workshops and I support them once they graduate and get their certification and I follow them in the field for at least two years. And that's my role in the position. Excellent. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, Brian Fulcher, and I actually graduated last year in May, and this is my first year teaching. I joined the program my senior year last year, so I only had the, the uh, benefit of the cohort for that one year, but it has been great. It's provided a lot of real-world insight. Um, like Ms. Ken, uh, Quintana said, she was in the field and worked, and then she's brought her experiences in to share with us and give us more of those real-world applications through the different um, conferences and, and little uh, meetings that we've had. So um, it's been a very big benefit for me outside of the normal um, cohort within the education program. So it's been kind of an additional support group. It's been really wonderful. I've enjoyed it early. What are you teaching now? Uh, I'm teaching eighth grade science. Cool. Oh. Excellent. Where I wanted to be, so I got lucky. And Perfect. Great. <laughs> All right, so the next window I have. Oh, no, we got one more person there. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Latrice Daniels, and I'm actually a mid level uh, math and science uh, major. I graduate this May. Woo! Mm -hmm. uh, yes, very excited. <laughs> um, I'm actually student teaching right now, so in the program with, with the Noise Scholarship, having all of those. Um, the seminars that we have and being able to go to the conferences that they set up for us is really helpful in my in, in my position where I am right now because I get to really mold myself as the teacher that I want to be. So by the time I have my own classroom, I've got everything that I need already and, and I'll be kind of equipped, I guess you could say, <laughs> to 
better teacher classroom. So I've really enjoyed being a part of the, the North Scholarship Group. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, so the next screen I have is run by Amanda. It's the SIUE group. Hi, I think you guys are muted, but not in the Hangout. I don't know how you've muted yourselves else. How? <laughs> um, yeah, because you're not muted in the Hangout. You've muted your hardware somehow, so you need to go in and fix that. Uh, I'm going to move on to the other UT Austin group, right? Jennifer and Amanda. No, sorry, not Austin, UT Arlington. We're in UT Arlington, yes. Hi, how's it going? Okay, I'm Jennifer. Um, I am a biology major. I'm like Latrice, also in my student teaching semester right now. Um, so we will graduate in May. Uh, the, like she said, the noise program has been very, very helpful with all the seminars that we do. I'm actually part of the UT program here. So I'm not going through the College of Education, I'm through the College of Science. Uh, so it has been very helpful to learn all the extra little things that they don't necessarily teach us when you teach. Uh, it's been a great experience, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm Amanda Fedorko. I'm a senior biology student also at UTA in the UTeach program. And just like Jennifer said, as somebody in the UTeach program, it's great to have every little bit of help and assistance and getting those tips on being a great teacher because in student teaching you learn so much and it's invaluable to have all those hands-on experiences. Excellent, excellent. Cool, well, thank you. Nice. All right, next we have the group from Wittenberg University. Haley, Kelsey, Russell, and Skylar. Is that everybody? Got everybody? Just make sure you unmute yourselves. I'd like to hear from each of you. One sec. Yeah, I know. The computer and webcam are all different places. Hello. Hi. Can you hear us Hi. now? Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Kathy is the disembodied voice. <laughs> I am here. Um, <laughs> You're off screen. I see you know <laughs> I am I am here so that I am um, representing the co-PIs that cannot be here, Gina Post and Kathy Reinsel. Uh, uh, Reinsel is part of the biology department, a faculty member, and uh, Gina Post is a math education person, and they are both on sabbatical. So oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just here sort of helping out, and uh, our program here uh, has been trying to prepare STEM teachers for high needs schools. Okay. We have a um, uh, about 1,800 students, which is much smaller than in the other uh, universities here. But we wanted to, you know, do uh, as much as we could for as many students as possible. But we give them rather large. Uh, you know, uh, tuition remission, and so that has worked pretty well. We've been in functioning here for about four years. Uh, we ha this is our first year of having any students out in the field, and we are about to hear from them in May, as a matter of fact. But we've got three in or two in student teaching right now, and then this lovely group that I have with me, Skyler. Uh, directly here <laughs> is Skylar is our is a junior and so to, uh, next year will be her senior year and the three others Kelsey Haley and Russell are sophomores and they will just be entering their noise um, places in uh, next fall. Excellent. Welcome. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Yes, I don't, you know, and I'm sure there there may be some questions later, and there may be something more that Haley, you may want to say. Um, yeah, just to reiterate, I'm Skylar, and Skylar. Uh, you're Skylar. fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm a junior here at Wittenberg, and I've actually, uh, I don't know how your noise programs work at your other schools, but we have a noise internship along with the scholars. And I did my internship last summer in Richland, Washington. And that was really cool. I got to work with the Pacific Northwest National Lab and uh, the Department of Energy. We, um, I specifically worked with the Chemical Mixture Methodology Department, even though I am a 
math major and I want to teach high school or middle school math. But it was a really neat opportunity and um, I'm currently co-oping with my noise mentor teacher in a middle school right now. I'm not in student teaching like the other people, but soon next year I will be student teaching, so it'll be fun. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. So yeah, anyone else want to share um, I'm doing the same internship this coming summer working at PNNL and I'm very excited. I'm doing some physics research, that's my field of study. And then so I just found I just got partnered up with my mentor out there and found out what I'll be doing um, working in the radio radiology lab that they have out there um, doing some really interesting stuff and so I'm excited to get experience out there and to take it back into the classroom with me. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, well, this past summer I had an internship through the community service office that was funded by Noise. And what I did was I led a math club that worked with, um, I think it was fifth through seventh grade students, and we just did very hands-on activities with math and had a good time. And that was a really good experience with education, mainly. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you. Well, I just got the scholarship, so <laughs> um, I'm excited to go to Washington in two summers, so looking forward to that and getting my mentor and getting into the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. All right. Um, thank you so much, guys, in Wittenberg. Uh, back to the second SIUE screen, I have Mara and Chris. Need to unmute yourselves first? I think we're on either now. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Next, give, so, so you guys are just down the hall for me in the, in the STEM Resource Center. Can I get a brief introduction? Sure. Okay, so I'm Mary Holloway, and I just am wrapping up my first year of having the Noise Scholarship. I'm a junior, so I won't be student teaching until next spring. Okay. Uh, so it's been great to get some classroom experience uh, before I normally would in the program. Okay. And I've really enjoyed the support from the Noise Scholarship Program. Great. I'm Chris Foster. Um, I'm also a junior. I'm technically a senior, but I'm um, a junior um, status-wise. Um, I am a biology secondary education major. Um, I'm also observing um, at a school district near us. Um, and one of the main things that I really like that hasn't really been talked about with some of the Noise uh, Scholars is the, the outreach <laughs> aspect. I really enjoy the outreach. We do a lot of things such as Science Olympiad, Science Fair, stuff like that. So I really enjoy getting involved in that. Excellent. And I see a line for me behind you. I think they've appeared. Yes, I think everyone's kind of came over to us. <laughs> Jenna, and us, so we're just going to go away. Come on. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenna. <laughs> I'm a senior. <laughs> um, I am a biology major, and I'm student teaching currently right now, and it's great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Courtney Thomas. Um, I'm student teaching as well. I graduate in May. I'm math. I'm student teaching in eighth grade. Um, and I actually wrapped that up today. So. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda Hyatt. Um, I am also graduating in May. I'm a senior. I also ended my student teaching today. Uh, high school sophomores in chemistry. So it's a pretty good day for all of us here at SIUE. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. And you're yeah. also president of the NSTA chapter? <laughs> yes, I am. I am that go-to person. That is me. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, any of the faculty, SIUE faculty, want to poke in? Dr. Weidegger, uh, Chairman. Somebody <laughs> come over here. And Jessica. Dr. Krim. Yay! <laughs> Uh, I'm Jessica Prim. I am one of the pink lady. Those of you who've watched the show before. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't have any with me today though. Um, I am one of the faculty that's involved with these five scholars. We're in our first year, and these are the only five we have, so we love them all very much. And um, we do various things. We work with um, research. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Okay. Oh, Next is Kelly Berry. 
Hi, I'm Kelly Berry. I'm in the biology department, one of the people working on the noise scholarships. Um, Chris Foster, one of our scholars, is working in my lab. <laughs> and um, we're, we are trying to get the kids, um, the students, research experiences at the university and all sorts of outreach experiences as well. It's a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Ooh, Dr. Wiener. <laughs> Let's play the roving screen. <laughs> yes, I'm in the chemistry department here, and uh, my one of my roles in the noise is that I'll be working with folks after they finish, which means I'm looking forward to dealing with some of the things you guys are already dealing with as our first cohort graduates, and uh, we have them in placements. Very cool. Very cool. But <laughs> not least, yay! Yay! I'm. Yes. <laughs> I'm Sharon Locke, and I'm director of the STEM Center here at SIUE, and we run a lot of outreach programs, many in high needs school districts, also Science Olympiad Science Fair that the scholars mentioned. So we play a role in uh, providing additional outreach opportunities for the students. And then we also have an internship program, a NOICE internship program for freshmen and sophomores, and we'll be selecting our first interns for this summer, and they'll be placed with community organizations to do science outreach. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Sharon. So yeah, I, I remember watching you guys work on that proposal. Um, so it was a lot of work that was put into that proposal to get the whole program started. So yay! Yeah, and yes, right. yes, Willie, we are the Cougars. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, you want to go next? Yeah. You, unmute yourself. Okay. So I'm uh, Willie Hunter. I'm a, a director of the Center for Math, Science, and Technology here at Illinois State University. Um, we've had a noise project for about five years now. Um, we've had 52 uh, students go through it. Um, almost all of them are now out teaching in the field full time. Um, there's a few that are student teaching this semester, and the reason that uh, there's no students with me today is because they're all out student teaching across the uh, across the state. Um, just my job is basically to well, I spend a lot of my time dreaming up stuff out of, and making it happen, uh, sometimes out of nothing, sometimes with a little bit of support behind me. Um, people come to my office and say, I've got this idea, and I say, you know what, that's a great idea. Go ahead and do it. And they walk out thinking, oh, Willie said I could do that. Must be a good idea. And so then they go and do great stuff. So my job is kind of like mostly as a cheerleader. Excellent. Okay. Um, <laughs> read me a thing. And there's another person who just joined oh, in. Right. Okay. <laughs> It's me. This is Courtney oh. Thomas. Hi. Hi. So we got another computer working. Yay. Okay. okay so, so I don't need to send mind. it to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. I'm gonna put you back on mute. Um. You'll remember to unmute yourselves when you speak. So that's. Oh. Okay. Just went away. Who's the other one? It's fine. Okay. Ah, all right. So, Persistence. Yes. Persistence. Awesome. So uh, we have a question from Nancy. I'd like to open up to all of the um, all of the the scholars and interns we have here. Uh, Nancy wants to know: Did any of you consider pursuing a STEM research path before you decided on teaching? Um, or if not, what uh, what was your tipping point that that put you in favor of teaching science? What? Why are you interested in teaching science specifically? We have, go for it. Uh, I can actually answer that one. Actually, for a long time in my life, I really wanted to be a researcher. Uh, and maybe far down the line, I haven't really ruled that out. But what happened with me is I took organic chemistry, and I was that one insufferable kid who really, really loved it. Uh, <laughs> so I actually ended up tutoring my peers, and that's where I got started. And I found out that I really, really loved the process of the explanation and helping somebody really get that aha moment. So... Uh, as I began to take, you know, more and more interested in it, more and more interest in it, and tutoring more and more, uh, then I came across the Noise Scholarship, and I was just lost. I, you know, got completely sucked in. So I've been really happy with the choice that I made. That's great. Very cool. Yeah. Anyone else have an answer for that? Either um, <clears throat> whether you decided to switch from research to teaching, or uh, why maybe you picked science as your your specialty for teaching. Okay. Hi. Okay. Am I unmuted? Yeah, we hear you. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so I came in to college with a double major in math and music, and I just really didn't know exactly what to do with that. And I really liked math, and I really liked music, but I 
didn't quite understand what I was supposed to do with both of those. So little by little, I realized that in my math classes, I was um, like the other person talking. Um, I was tutoring a lot, and I really enjoyed that. And with this noise program, I'm hoping that maybe um, in whatever school that I go to, if their music department maybe needs a little bit of help, I could help with that. And um, because I both do math, uh, band and singing, so hopefully I would be able to do both of my talents at whatever school I decide to go to. So that was kind of what put me over the edge for uh, teaching rather than doing research. Very cool. Yeah. I should add that Michael Jobin says, math counts! Uh, <laughs> I think that was I have a, a comment. course program. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I actually started back to school late. Um, if you can't tell, I'm probably as old as most of the professors that are in on this. Um, <laughs> to go back to get a degree in engineering and after taking lots and lots of math cor uh, courses I realized that there was a lot of new graduates from high school that could not do math and so I would spend a lot of my time helping them and my wife suggested that rather than follow the light, the tunnel with no light in an engineering degree that I was working on uh, that, I, that I go into teaching because I love teaching the math so much and after I got into the uh, math and science uh, mid-level program with all of the science and, and the math that was involved in there, I really, really enjoyed the science and got lucky enough to actually student teach in eighth grade science and just fell in love with it. So not coming from necessarily a perspective of going into the research base, but from kind of another angle, um, I am ecstatic with my choice and absolutely love teaching. I love the kids. I I would hope that I could maybe make them have those math skills that are required so that they could, could become future engineers. So that was kind of the path that I went on. Very cool. Very right. cool. Sounds like a lot of people have had some teaching experience in a slightly more informal setting, which, which let you know, hey, this might be something to pursue. Mm -hmm. uh, any of the SIUE participants have a story they want to share? Yes. <clears throat> we <Let's> would. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I actually went to pharmacy school for three years, a professional pharmacy program in St. Louis, not the one at SIUE, mm -hmm. uh, before changing my major. So while my major now is mathematics, secondary ed, I'll also get endorsed to teach science, which is exciting, so that I can do both of them and hopefully do some interdisciplinary um, courses with those. Uh, but I guess I had always put teaching on the back burner. I can do that later in life and then was in pharmacy school and realized I didn't want to put it up. Here I am. I had a similar experience tomorrow. Um, I was pre-farm my first year, pre-med my second year, hated both of them. Um, the big reason why I didn't choose teaching from the beginning is the money. Um, and then I took CI 200, our introduction courses, on a whim. I was just like, I've always loved education. I've always loved my teachers. I've always loved, I've always had a passion for science. And um, Took it on a whim and I loved it. Fell in love with the curriculum. Fell in love with everything about it. And so here I am. And then I'm getting I'm I have I'm a secondary biology, so I'm getting my endorsement in biology in high school. But I have middle school endorsements in math, history, English, and science. Very cool. Oh, fantastic. Very well rounded. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, Nancy also says cupcakes rule. Thanks for just. <laughs> I know Nancy was watching that, that episode. Um, so I'm curious, what does the, um, the noise program bring extra to you guys uh, as um, teachers in training? What does the noise program do that's extra in addition to your schoolwork? Can we talk some more? <laughs> <laughs> First one, hit the button. <laughs> Um, so in our program, um, at least that where I'm at in the SIUE program, I wouldn't be in the classroom until the fall, but with the noise scholarship I was put in the classroom this semester, so I'm getting extra experience in the classroom, which is of course monumental for a pre-service teacher, um, and then of course the support and discussions that we're able to have with our peers and also with our mentors has been largely helpful in shaping us as educators. At least I think so. <laughs> and, I, and I agree with Mara. Um, I took the CI315A, the introduction to student teaching. We have an observation semester and then we have a student teaching semester. Mm -hmm. 
and I took that already before I entered the program, and then I. <laughs> No, no. Did it just freeze? Oh my god! <laughs> so now that I've taken it, um, and I and Dr. Krim has actually talked about maybe switching the program around so we can actually have a specific time frame where we may have more observation time, so we're more prepared for the classroom. And I think that would be definitely big beneficial for the secondary ed program. So is that that's kind of things working out since SIUE, SIUE is in its first year? Um, mm -hmm. the kind of things that, that are being worked out. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. What about some of the other windows? <laughs> uh, make sure you Who's unmute next? yourself, um, Latrice. Yes. Hi. Okay. <laughs> um, I have names for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think what the Noise Scholarship brought to me was it really opened up my eyes to the world outside of the classroom and to the world of science elsewhere, like around the state of Texas. Um, in being in the education program, you know, you read the books and you go to the classes and you do the work. But then once I joined the Noise Scholarship my, this year, my senior year, I got to go to the CAS conference. And that was such an amazing experience to see so many other teachers from all over the state of Texas and from so many other places and to pick their brains about their classrooms and to get more ideas and to see so many booths and vendors. It was just really overwhelming and I got really, really excited about it. So I really thank the North Scholarship for that because that going to that conference really, really changed the world of science for me. Excellent, excellent. Cool. So we have <coughs> so we have the, the seminars, the, the groups, um, conference paying for con conferences are expensive. Uh, yeah. that's a big deal. Anybody else? Alright. Um yeah, I have something to say too. Um at uh, Richland, Washington, when I was doing my internship, we also had a portion of the time where we talked to experts in bringing research into the classroom, which I thought was really neat because one of the big things with kids nowadays is they want to know how math relates to their lives. They're like, I'm never going to use this in real life, but by being able to be in like that situation where it actually does relate to real life situations, it was really cool. And like some other people have said before, um, we actually have a noise mentor within um, the middle or high school, and you get to stay with them junior and senior year, and you get to build a relationship with them and learn from them, not just from one semester, but from several semesters, which is definitely a benefit. And even after you graduate, they're supposed to and encouraged to stay in contact with you for at least a year or two afterwards. So in that first couple years of crazy teaching and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible teacher and I'm doing everything wrong, like, they're able to get you through it and it's, it's a lot of good support. That's fantastic. Um, we have a comment from Guido Bibra for all of you. Uh, seeing so many inspired young teachers really gives me a lot more faith in humanity and education. You all have my utmost respect. So that's from Guido awesome. Bibra over in Germany. Anyone else have positive um, extras that the noise program gives them that they want to share? How about the um, the faculty? What um, has bringing the noise program to your school um, or university done to, to help with t training teachers? Willie, maybe you want to chime in? One of the things I've noticed is that we have a lot of scholars who don't have the funds, they have to work mm -hmm. and support themselves while they're trying to go to school and just the funding and helping them pay for the education has been huge and I see that a lot that the, the students couldn't continue to become good teachers if they didn't have the funding help. So we have probably 70 scholars right now that have been through our noise program or currently in the noise program and a lot of them are high need students themselves. Okay. Anyone else um, in the faculty? There's Jess. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I would agree that uh, the financial has allowed, the financial benefit has allowed different people to continue or extend their education. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I'm talking, I'm thinking now about what Amanda said is that it's really um, 
useful for them to work in a group and support each other and collaborate with each other. And you know, it's one thing for faculty to say something. It's another thing for the, the five of them to support each other. Very cool. Very cool. That's great. Yes. Yeah. We'll, oh. oh, there. I could add one comment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Willie. Um, just that I know that for almost all of our scholars, they made the decision about teaching in advance of getting the scholarship. For, I'm going to say, 30 to 40 percent of them, the scholarship helped push them to the decision to uh, uh, become a teacher in the Chicago Public Schools. Mm -hmm. um, and then for a couple of them, I know that they were kind of wavering for years, for a couple of years, uh, about whether or not to accept the scholarship or not, and uh, eventually they decided, you know what, if I take the scholarship, it'll force me to make the decision that I've been kind of hemming and hawing, and so it kind of allowed them to get, gave them permission to do what they kind of in their hearts wanted to do. Very cool. Okay. All right. I think we heard from all those. <laughs> <laughs> like driving mm. the bus. I think one of the amazing things about this program is that it gives everybody a, a great cohort and, and the support. I think a number of you have mentioned support as one of the benefits of this program. And I'd like to hear a little more about that. I don't know if some of you could maybe give an example or tell just a short story about a time when um, you really got some nice support from the others in this program that you may not have had if you were just on your own working your way through a teaching <laughs> program <laughs> and um, because that sometimes just makes it such a big difference um, it you know it can make or break sometimes you know your your um, persistence and your your will to keep going through um, the tough times that teaching sometimes brings you so I'd love to hear some stories if anybody wants to share something I saw Mar and Chris getting all kind of yeah. <laughs> what's that all about <laughs> come on <laughs> there's there's Share. a story there <laughs> Somebody help somebody out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you tell the story and I will listen. How about that? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I guess our story also involves Dr. Krim. Uh oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, since Chris and I are in the same point ish in our program, uh, we kind of spend a lot of time talking about what our experiences are like in the classroom and. At the moment, we're both placed in East St. Louis uh, public schools, which for people who aren't familiar with this area, those are pretty much the roughest schools around. Um, and it has been an interesting experience. Um, but we also meet together with Dr. Krim to discuss the issues that we faced and how to cope with them, how to learn from those situations. Um, so that's kind of the, where the support has come in for us. Okay. Great. And like friends. I and mean, like, yeah, we've that, been friends anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> that helps. <laughs> and we are also returning for our second year um, next year together. So yeah. we are the two returners. <laughs> the other three are graduating. So we get to transition the, the little noises into their, <laughs> their program. So that'll be a fun experience. <sighs> That's good. It's really important. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have uh, anything about support that the program's given you? Uh, I do, actually. Uh, like I said before, I'm part of the UTeach program, and because it's through College of Science, it is kind of insular. Uh, so as, the, as a noise scholar, uh, I believe that uh, Latrice said that she was able to go to CAST. I did the same thing, hmm. uh, and just through the different things that we've done, the seminars that we've run, the places we've gone, I've been exposed to more of the College of Education side of it. So I've met a lot of people and had a lot of different experiences. I mean, uh, the UTeach program is just math and science uh, in the upper levels. So I don't know anybody who wants to teach anything lower than eighth grade uh, in our program. So it's very, it's very homogenous, really. It's very vanilla. So getting to meet these other people who are doing uh, early childhood and things like that was very interesting. Uh, and we've kept in touch. It's been really great. I have to ask, what's CAS? Huh? Is it CAST? CAST, CAST, Conference for the Advancement of Science Teaching. Okay, okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. The acronym okay. I'm not familiar with. We love acronyms. <laughs> 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 
Anyone else have a support community type story to share? I'm looking to see if anyone's lips are moving. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Anyone have um, a a, a story to share from their classroom experiences, either a really challenging or a really rewarding moment they've had in their, if you've done student teaching yet? (laughs) I see frantic. I'm here. Hi. So I'm Jenna, if you, if anybody forgot. Um, so I'm Jenna, and I teach biology. I teach, I teach freshmen. Um, oh, you did you, can't, did you oh, click the mic? Yeah, that's fine. We can hear. Okay. Um, so I teach freshmen, um, and I actually rented some lab quests from the STEM Center um, and some turbidity sensors, and we were testing pond water for um, limiting nutrients because um, we were just talking about ecology. And one of the kids was um, messing with the lab class, and he's like, wow, I feel like a real scientist. Um, and some other kids were like, yeah, this is so great. Like, I feel so smart doing this. Um, so <laughs> I felt that was, it was so rewarding to um, get that supplies from the STEM Center and get that support um, and then use it and make the kids feel awesome. So it was pretty great. Oh, that's great. Great. Excellent. So um, if you guys haven't uh, seen that, we did a previous episode with Colin Wilson, who's uh, manager of the Resource Center. Uh, it's a giant storeroom of science educational <laughs> awesomeness and expertise. <laughs> um, so you can go back and look at that episode. We did a whole episode just on just on the Resource Center. And support. And, yes. yes, and all, all the support <laughs> that it, we have locally. Um, anyone else have a challenging or rewarding story of teaching from their student teaching so far? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amanda. Um, I currently teach sophomores, high school chemistry, and I had a particularly challenging student who didn't feel that she was competent in chemistry and that she could um, put forth the effort to work with chemistry. So last week we did an inquiry lab where they were given six chemicals. They were told the types of uh, the names of the chemicals and what was in the bottles, but they didn't actually know which bottle contained what, so there were six unknowns. And she, the student who felt she was not competent in chemistry, uh, she was the first one done, and the first one that had all of them correct. So we kind of had a little dance party in the back (laughs) of the room, and um, we just celebrated that accomplishment, and it was really, really good time for me, because I was actually able to break through her wall of resistance for even just a day. And uh, she was engaged in the class and just got a, got something out of it instead of just, I can't do this. So that was a big moment for me last Friday. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's really great. Awesome. I have um, a story. I actually work at a, an all-girls school uh, in, in Grand Prairie here in Texas. And we are 79% Hispanic. And... As you've had any kind of education courses, you've heard all of the banter about the how a lot of the Hispanic girls are held back and they don't want them to to you know value education. And it's interesting to see how at the beginning of the year how many of them are kind of shy and, and they don't want to participate. And then as mm-hmm. the year goes along and you do get them involved and they are actually learning and they're succeeding, just how much confidence that they start to get and they start talking about how can't wait to get to high school. They can't wait to do more science in high school. Um, where one of our pathways is our STEM program in our high school, which is slowly building steam. And most of the girls that are there are going into that STEM program. So it's a huge reward for us to see that these some of these kids that that at home they don't value education and they don't value especially their females getting that higher education that these kids are very interested in science and very interested in the STEM, so it's been a very positive, rewarding experience for me as a first year teacher. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Make a difference. I went to an all-girl high school that (laughs) all's well with a STEM program, so there there, there might be something to that. (laughs) I think that was a good idea, even though sometimes I hated it (laughs) at the time. Anyone else have? Um, We have... uh, Okay, I'm trying to find the question that I saw. Uh, anyone can chime in if they have. Oh, here we go. Uh, aside from financial challenges, um, what do you think your greatest challenge is going to be going forward as a teacher? Well, 
I see lots of thinking faces. <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe the, the uh, faculty can chime in as well. Maybe you know what <laughs> challenges they're going to face soon. We know your challenge. Uh, I'll chime in. Sure. Um, I am a very naturally non-confrontational person. Uh, an ideal, I uh, currently student teaching physics, and I'll probably continue that going forward. Um, even though in Texas, when you certify in science, you can be certified for biology, chemistry, physics, and geology. So I'll probably stick with physics. Um, so I will have older kids, and I really feel that classroom management will probably be my biggest issue. Uh, but the best part about Moist is that uh, Adele, who is also on the conference call, it actually pretty regularly runs uh, uh, seminars on classroom management. So uh, they've definitely been helpful so far, and she's really great about, you know, you can go and you can ask a question, and, and she's really great about that. So probably what I'd say. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's what I always say my problem would be. That's yeah. why I can't see. So <laughs> well, thanks for the kudos, Jennifer. But <laughs> one of the things that I see as the scholars go out into the classrooms in the public school system is they are faced with having to work with departments that may not have a lot of training and inquiry and STEM science and uh, uh, more inquiry learning and so they're working with the department and the other teachers in the department are resistant to the new ideas that our scholars sometimes want to bring to the classroom and so how to cooperatively work with their department and still get the science inquiry integrated into their classroom is issue. Okay, I th that feel like that was a conversation we had recently in Journal Club Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. we know, you know, that the, there are so many great teaching methods out there that aren't being adopted quickly into educational programs, and that, that could be part of it, is that the person you're student teaching for isn't familiar with those, those techniques. Yeah, I think, wait, that sounds really familiar. <laughs> we just had this conversation. Right. Well, new teachers are, I mean, you can be agents of change, which is a really heavy burden in a way, but um, you come out of your you know, recent courses and programs with all these great new ideas and full of enthusiasm and you want to try all these great things and then sometimes you do run into, you know, a system or a group of more, you know, experienced teachers that are just not ready to, you know, let you be all that you can be yet. So it is really, you know, it, it takes some skill to kind of navigate that and hang in there um, until you get your opportunity. Agents of change. Yeah. Not agents of shield. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a comment, a uh, question from Atsura. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to. Me, Gulchi. I'm going to put your name. Okay. Atsurin uh, Baltazan uh, asking about resources available for the um, scientists who are not going into teaching to, to better um, be able to communicate science. Um, I am part of one such program that's specifically for astronomers called Astronomy Ambassadors. I think you'd have to look at the different science professional societies that uh, run programs like that. Um, and, and related to this question, I'd like to ask about some of the outreach experience that some of the Noise scholars have had. Um, in addition to your, your classroom teaching and your classroom learning, uh, what, what kind of outreach experience have you had and how has that helped you? Um, I have something. This isn't necessarily an out outreach program, but I actually got to participate in a professional development program this past summer at Jet Propulsion Laboratory with the STEM teacher and researcher. What? Can you hear me? Do I see a NASA meatball on your shirt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just presented my honors thesis actually uh -huh. on sample integrity for the sample return mission on, for Mars 2020. I actually got to work with um, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in through partnership with STEM Teacher and Researcher Program, which is through Cal Poly. Um, it's a really great program, and they accept people who are in the Cal Poly program and noise scholars. So this is something that I think almost every pre-service teacher should do. They basically pair you up, it's kind of like the noise experience we have with our universities. They pair you up with the National Laboratory, mm -hmm. and they give you professional development opportunities, and you could do it up to three, up to three years, so three summers you could do this. 
cool. and they pay you really well and you get to live in a certain place for free so I got to live in Los Angeles for free and they paid me like forty five hundred dollars for two, two months and it basically connects research experience with um, I guess ways you can do inquiry based lessons in the classroom mm -hmm. so I just want to let you guys know about this program because I don't think a lot of East Coast universities know about it because it's a it's a West Coast thing so mm -hmm. yeah what was the name of the program again? It's called Star STEM Teacher and oh, okay. Researcher. I can write, type it in here. Sure, sure. Yeah. We typed it in. I can share that out to our audience as well. As the yeah. Videos link. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. I, I mean, it's 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 pixelated, but I I've, I could make out the NASA logo. So. Yeah. I know meatball right here. Sure. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I know some of you SIUE guys have been involved in in uh, outreach experience as well. Yep. So, um, we actually have several um, outreach. Oh, okay. We have some really good. Good. Give us a second. We're having some different problems. Okay. So, they could okay, so we have a lot of different. Am I good? Yeah, you did. <coughs> okay, so we have a lot of different outreach programs here at SAUE um, Mosaic, um, which I can Sharon will probably have a better explanation for Mosaic than I would. Um, we also have Science Olympiad, which I've participated in for the last two years. Uh, science Olympiad is when um, groups of high school and middle school students come and they use science projects here at SIUE. And it's really interesting because I was a developer and a proctor for the uh, Dynamic Planet unit this this semester this year. Um, and it was really interesting because it was it was developing uh, code developed with uh, Ms. Cundy over here and then uh, Dr. Krim. It was very interesting because it was it was something that I had never really experienced. We had a lot we do a lot of creativity, thinking outside the box, and it really prepared us like lesson planning and preparing lessons and stuff like that. Um, and in the past, I've also volunteered for science fair through judging. And um, one of the big things I really want to do when I get into a school, especially lower income schools, is um, I know that the school that I came from back home does not have a they do not participate in science fair. I've never even heard of science fair until I came to SIUE. Um, so I'd really like to get lower income schools involved in science fair, science Olympiad, other outside um, science resources because I feel like that is where people really decide that they want to go into science is by getting involved in projects such as that. Very cool. Great. And way back, we did an episode about science Olympiad way back in the beginning. Um, uh, so that's, yes. it's, it's, it's a, it is a, uh, it's kind of a, it, it's a science and engineering like, Challenges, little events, kind of like set up like um, an Olympic game tournament. Um, so that's pretty cool that you, yeah. So so proctoring proctoring that and developing those activities uh, really gets students engaged, uh, and and science fair as well, um, which here we call the science and engineering research, research challenge. challenge. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so judging that is a whole whole other ball of wax. Um, I assume you were one of the, you had a few a few projects that you were judging. Um, for that, you didn't. You actually got time, had time to spend talking with the students about their experiments. So that's really cool too. I was yeah. one of the best affair judges, so I had to run through every project, and I <laughs> didn't have a lot of time to talk. I have a lot of time. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, anyone else? Maybe um, yeah. does anyone Any other outreach experience? Um, Mosaic uh, is. Do you want to talk about Mosaic? Mentioned because he mentioned oh, Mosaic. Yeah, that's um, it's minds on science activities in the community. If I can get that acronym out. Um, <laughs> and the idea is, it's an out of classroom. It's after school, um, usually act um, program. And the idea is to engage students in. Um, science that's not only hands-on but um, more thoughtful in nature too, so minds-on, and um, get them engaged and excited about science. So um, we have a nice range of activities. Um, a lot of them are, um, you know, design um, in nature, design challenges, um, going through scientific processes, learning about what it means to be a scientist and what science is all about. Um, and basically having a lot of fun doing science. Um, so that's been a program we've been running out of the STEM Center for um, about three years. I'm a big proponent of after school science programs yeah. and clubs. So that's great that you guys can do that as well. Um, we have a question from Erin Morris. 
Um, this is to all the participants again. What do you think uh, have been the most important lessons you have learned during student teaching? So for those of you that have done student teaching, what's um, but what do you think? Can you can you pull out one most important lesson? It's a tough question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just I one. See thinking faces. <gasps> one lesson. Am I talking? Hi. Am I on here? Yes, you're on. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think flexibility is the biggest thing I have learned while student teaching. You can have the best lesson plan. Things always go wrong. I've experienced uh, so many things in my student teaching um, where, okay, uh, the students aren't picking up on this lesson. Maybe we need to do an extra day. Or one day we had a lockdown at my school, which was a new experience. So. Um, just lots of things pop up and the amount of flexibility you have to have, you know, whenever you're in your methods courses, they're like, make a nine-week plan. Mm -hmm. And you can do that, but things will change. <laughs> so um, just have, being flexible and patient with the changes that are going to come. That's great. That's really important. I remember back when I was teaching, we always used to say there's no such thing as a normal day. Yeah. There is never a normal day. Something will happen. It'll be a, a fire drill or somebody will get sick in your room or you know, who knows. So yeah, that is a great lesson. Uh, I want to give the Wittenberg students a uh, chance if they have an answer. Sounds like their computer's about to die. Oh. <laughs> so. I think that's that's the group that that has the battery. So oh, if you okay. have anything you want, I see a doll. I see a puppy. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I'm training her to be a service dog. So this is oh. Ash. But yeah, she just wanted to say hi. Everyone, <laughs> <laughs> she's a cute. Thank you all for the yeah, conversation. Thank you. Thank, you guys. Yeah. thank you guys. Thank you very much. And like you know, Great. said you guys are definitely definitely inspiring to the rest of us. So. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get that in before their battery ran out. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else uh, have a, a, a lesson, an important lesson they've learned from their experience uh, as starting teachers? I've got one. Yeah. Um, I found that making the personal connections with the students really helps to motivate them. Uh, throughout student teaching, and we were there for several months, and at the beginning, you don't really know the students, and they don't really know you, and you can kind of identify the ones that are having a hard time with the subject, and it's hard to figure out, you know, what pushes their buttons, what's going to make them make the extra effort, and even now, you know, it's been a, like a month and a half, and I feel like just making those personal connections with the students, like making the phone calls to the parents and letting them know that you care and that you're invested in their education and their future and that you're there for them, they're totally willing to put forth the effort once they know that you're on their side. Like they're so used to kind of painting themselves versus the world sometimes with their teenagers and just letting them know that is a great way to start the year. Excellent. Very cool. Very cool. Wonderful. Yeah. Very important. Making a connection. Any other oh, yeah. questions that you have? She's the she's the teacher of the, this pair. So <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was if you guys could picture yourselves like maybe five years in the future or something. What would be one thing you might remember about the Noise program? Um, and I don't know. I think you've probably kind of talked about a lot of the really important things. Maybe the support being one of them, but. Anything else that you maybe think that in the future you'll think back and go, yeah, that noise program, really glad I had that. Can I say my whole student teaching experience? <laughs> yes. Uh, and the reason I say that is I was at a different placement for my observations, and I didn't get moved here until January. Okay. And I have just had such a positive experience with the school, with the teacher I've been placed with, just with the kids in general, it has given me nothing but a positive experience that I don't know if I, I probably would have had a good experience at the school I was at, but I don't know. I'm just so thankful that I was given the opportunity to be here in this school. And um, I also got the opportunity to go to NCTM. Um, in New Orleans. Me and um, Mara actually just got back from it on Saturday. 
And that is just an opportunity that I would not have been able to afford without this program. Um, and everyone there was just shocked. Wow, you know, you're a student and you're here. That's really great that you're getting this experience before you're even in the field. And it was such an important opportunity to have pre-service. And now that I'm wrapping up my student teaching, I just could not be happier placed in it. So that's, I've just had such a positive experience with my whole thing that wouldn't have happened if I didn't got this if I didn't get the scholarship. So that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. That's great. Great. Anybody else? Final word. Can I answer this one too? I know I've been kind of a chatterbox. No, go for it. <laughs> uh, kind of linked to what she said, I would say it would probably be the experiences that I was able to have. I was able to go to the science teacher convention recently here in Texas. Uh, and. Honestly, because so many of the teachers really want to go to this, it usually ends up being the best teachers in the part the department, the ones who've been around the longest, who get funded to go. So for me to be able to go as a student teacher, I mean, I'd never been in a classroom before this, and you know, everybody there has been there for 20 years, and you know, all the publishers are there because they assume that you have some kind of pull in your district, you know. <laughs> just being able to go to things like this, uh, and I mean, I'm not going to have the chance to do that again for years, honestly, uh, but being able to do things like that has just been amazing. It's been wonderful. That's great. It is rare for, yes, somebody, it's just student teaching to go, so, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. All right. Well, um, we are at the hour, so I am going to uh, wrap it up real quick and then uh, say goodbye to all of our lovely guests. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. I realize that the setup was a little chaotic, so thank you for... <laughs> but wow, everybody did it. Yay. So talk about being flexible and <laughs> persistent. Yes, Great. yes. Um, thank you guys for watching, your questions, um, your comments. Uh, like I said, I, I think you know said it best for all of us. You guys are totally inspiring, and, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I think that's it. So this video will be archived on YouTube. Um, I can share with, actually the link I sent you guys earlier should still work. If, I'll probably just share the YouTube link with you guys. Um, we'll have this um, archived on our channel as well. So this will be around for the, all of the internet's posterity, I guess. Um, so so thank you. You can come back and look at this. Um, and for everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, we continue with our normal Hangout schedule. Um, on Friday, we have the weekly Space Hangout hosted by Fraser Kane. We'll do some wrap-up of your astronomy and space news from the week. Right, right here. Sunday night will be the weekly Space Hangout. Um, I think that's still happening around 8 p.m. Pacific, so uh, if it's too cold, too cloudy where you are, show up for the virtual star party. You can look through our uh, astronomers' telescopes virtually. It's fantastic. It's so mm -hmm. spoiling. Um, and what else? Uh, Astronomy cast, assuming Pamela's back from the Czech Republic on Monday. Maybe. I think they've got to catch up a little bit because uh, they've been both on travel. Uh, and then Wednesday, next Wednesday, we'll be moving back to the earlier time for, for learning space, which is 1 p.m. Central. Central. So 11 Pacific. <laughs> one, so uh, 6 GMT, I think. <laughs> I, I will, can't do the time zones I can't do it anymore. in my head. Don't, don't trust me mm -hmm. to do it in my head. It'll be in the newsletter. It'll be uh, all the usual places. So I'll create an event for that. Um, so that is it. Thank you, all of our teachers, our student mm -hmm. teachers. Thank you. Oh, Thank you guys you. are awesome. Really Noisy. Yep. Inspiring. Noisers. Yep. Noisers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes. Go forth and teach. Go forth and teach. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yes. Thanks so much, everybody. Well done, Nicole. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, thanks. I'm doing the